Hi, today I wanted to talk about Werewolf Jones and Sun's Summer Fun Annual. And this book came out a few months ago. And when it first came out, I was there for the uh, live event. And I sat on it and I got shut out. Um, and then when I went on eBay to look for this book, this book was selling in the 80s. It's still commanding probably close to 50, if not more. However, I got really lucky. Um, a friend of mine, John Taylor Jr., um, him and I chat, we've known each other for a couple of years. Um, Vic, we were in the same Facebook group and he saw that it was my birthday recently. So he said, listen, I have an extra copy of this. Um, I'm going to give it to you as a birthday gift because you know, you're a cool guy and you've been really a great. And he sent it to me and that's one, this is John's, um, John Taylor Jr. This is his Instagram handle. He is a cartoonist as well. Good guy, knowledgeable about comics and, um, go check him out. Go check out his page. It's at reader. JNTR. And I just want to take a moment really to thank John for his generosity and for um, giving me this really great book. Um, I really wanted to read it and I'm glad I have it. So now that we can talk about the book. So this book, um, usually your um, Werewolf Jones and your um, Meg Mog and Owl universe books are written and drawn solely by Simon Hanselman. However, this is a joint effort. It was Simon along with Josh Pettinger. Josh Pettinger is someone that I have really got into his work fairly recently. I wish I would have been on board sooner. Um, he does great work with uh, his Goiter anthology and also with uh, Power Wash, which was just a wonderfully great book. Um, so they got together and, and, and they, I don't know if it says written and drawn, so I don't know if they co-wrote the stories. I know some are drawn by Simon, some are drawn by um, Josh. And I just wanted to show this off a little bit. So there's a the front cover, back cover, I love the use of colors here. I love the fact that independent cartoonists can get these nicely made books printed. Inside cover here. And I would show the inside cover completely here, but there's some stuff here that the YouTube's algorithms may say is not kosher. But it's really cool. Anyway, first story called Fruit Boots, and it's your typical type of uh, Werewolf Jones story where he's taking the kids out to go rollerblading, and these guys make fun of their boots. So they just literally go in and just beat the hell out of the guys. And you just see like Jackson here is like crying like sad, like he doesn't like the violence. The next story called Eternity, this is, this is drawn by Josh Penninger. And what I found really interesting was that usually when you have characters that are iconic to a cartoonist, like these characters are, they only look good as Simon's drawing them. Like, um, like in comics, like if you ever read Deathmate, the Valiant Image crossover that was really terrible from the 90s. If you look at the image characters, when they're drawn by the Valiant artists, they look really stupid. I mean, they only look interesting when the image guys draw them. It's quite funny. It's like a music analogy I'm going to show my age. Uh, the Beatles. Uh, usually when somebody does a cover for a Beatles song... It doesn't work. They usually only sound good when the Beatles actually perform the song. But Josh Penninger does a great job drawing in his style using some of the cues like these profile shots when um, characters talk to each other like Simon does, but doing it his way, inking it his way. Uh, he likes to put the titles in like a wall or something here instead of, for instance, like here you'd have like a, like Simon has to put like one panel with a title. So he's drawing it in his style, and I've seen him before where he'll draw something, but the camera will be like back and up a little bit, looking down at an angle. And this story is just, like a lot of stories, Warwell Jones is going to somebody's house to cop drugs. And these kids are just trying to keep themselves entertained, and they have to like deal and encounter with all these weirdos. And you have some like interesting cameos here, like I swear I think this is supposed to be Jasper Jubenville. And I know that here, early on, we have um, Nate Garcia here. And it's just these kids, you feel bad for these kids because they're just trying to cope and make some kind of normalcy out of the abnormal. I mean, even here, like Jackson just says, I wish we had a normal daddy sometimes. But they love their dad. Is that thing where your dad is really messed up, your parents are messed up, but you still love them. And they really don't have anybody else but each other. And that father. 
Um, you know, they they even at the point where they have to help his dad up. You know, and he's getting in the car driving. You know, to the point where like he can really drive. And I swear this is Ted Ward from um, Power Wash and from Goiter Seven. And it's just these kinds of stories. Now they're all stories that are separate and self-contained, but there is an ongoing thread of continuity. So it's not like they flip back in time or anything. There is kind of like a beginning and an end. Next story, they're at Werewolf Jones' house and the kids do weird stuff to occupy their time. Spit game. I'm not gonna get into spit games. A little bit raunchy. I wasn't offended, but just for video purposes. And then the Jones family, where um, Werewolf Jones and his wife, their mother, they get into a fight because I guess Werewolf Jones wants to do some kind of weird sex action. She refuses. And then next morning, he's got a black eye and he's got this look on his face like he's just crushed. And he's like, no, no, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Where, and, he, and there's sometimes these Werewolf Jones stories where he just does all this insane crap and like doesn't care. But then once in a while, it hits him like... Man, I, I shouldn't have done this sort of stuff. So he gets out of the house and he ends up with this scene where he ends up goes to a park nearby and he's trying to solicit uh, gay sex. Eventually the cops are called and they arrest him. And the kids are back home. And they're like, where's daddy? He's like, I don't know, but I'm going to leave your father and you guys again. Like she's strung out and messed up too. And it's just, you feel bad for these kids. It's like not depressing, but it's, you feel sad, like a sense of melancholy with them. And then often when Werewolf Jones actually ends up in jail, when it seems like when he actually has to pay a price for his actions is when he starts getting clarity and he starts thinking like, you know, like, what am I doing? So to end the story, and spoilers, just letting you know, he gets out, he drives by and he sees an airport. Somehow he commandeers a big jetliner. He's the only one in it. And he has this whole, you see these like 15 page panel page where he's talking about he's, all these regrets that he's had. And he's talking about what am I doing? I'm doing the wrong thing. And these panels here where he's not even saying anything, he closes his eyes and he decides just to end it all. And he crashes his plane into like a little offshore island. And it ends with the kids here just shot seeing this live on TV. That's how it ends. Now, Simon does these stories and then he'll say, well, you know, that was in a different timeline like he did with Crisis Zone, but it doesn't lessen the impact of these stories. And it actually, you know, he's shown Werewolf Jones die many different ways. And each way is still pretty impactful because at the end of the story, even though he's a terrible father, he's a terrible human being, he has like really no redeeming qualities. You actually, feel sorry for how pathetic he is. Um, when I was younger, um, in the early 80s, there's a lot of uh, a lot of coke in Miami, a lot of cocaine. So I knew people that were into the drugs. They weren't into shooting up heroin like World with Jones is, but I knew people. So some of these elements that you see here about this drug addict lifestyle, they're outrageous, they're crazy, but they're also authentic. And for me, it's sort of like, yeah, I definitely could see that. Or, or I've seen that. Um, so this is another great book by Simon. Um, another great book by Josh as well. If you can find one to cover, um, I would recommend you get it. If you're a completist for Simon Hanselman's work, I definitely think you should get it. It's a really nice self-contained story. And it's really well done. I'm looking forward to the next project they're, come, they're working on together. And again, I want to thank John Taylor Jr. for the gift. I really appreciate it. Thanks.